If you actually understand square roots, well, then you should be able to figure out the answer to this problem without using a calculator. All right, so let's take a look at the question. We have the square root of 20 plus the square root of 45. Now, if you think you know the solution, put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct steps to solve this problem in just one second. But first, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, we have the square root of 20 plus the square root of 45. Now, maybe the solution to this problem is we need to take 20 and add it to 45. So do you think the answer to this problem is the square root of 65? Well, maybe that is the correct solution, or maybe it is not. All right, so let's take a look at exactly how to solve this problem. Okay, so is the square root of 20 plus the square root of 45 equal to the square root of 65? Well, no, this is not the right answer, but it is a logical wrong answer, right? So if you don't really understand square roots, you might be thinking to yourself, well, let me see here. I have a square root here and a square root here. So maybe I need to add these numbers underneath the square root. So the square root of 65 is logical. However, it is wrong. But the good news is that uh, adding square roots is not that difficult. And you definitely need to understand this for courses like algebra. Okay, so let's talk about some basic concepts and principles to add square roots. So let me give you a simple example. Something like 2 times the square root of 7 plus 3 times the square root of 7. Okay, so the main idea here is that when you are trying to add square roots, you can add uh, two square roots or two or more square roots or add and subtract two or more square roots if you have the exact same square root. So here we have two square roots of seven and over here we have three square roots of seven. So I can add these two square roots by adding the numbers in front of the square roots. So the sum here would be five square root of seven. Okay, so really that's uh, the main idea to add square roots. So when we look at our problem, we have the square root of 20 and the square root of 45. These are different square roots, so we can't add them. Well, not so quick because we can actually simplify these square roots and add them together. I'll show you what I'm talking about in just one second, but let's take a look at another example. So what if I had uh, two times the square root of seven plus three times the square root of five? Okay, so can we add these square roots? Well, no, we cannot because the square root of seven and the square root of five are different, right? And we can't really simplify these two uh, square roots, so we're kind of stuck with this expression. But sometimes you can simplify square roots, like the square root of 20, we can re uh, kind of reduce it down. Now, if we're really not reducing, we're simplifying this square root, and I'll show you what I'm talking about in just one second. So we're going to rewrite the square root of 20 in its simplest form, and we're also going to rewrite the square root of 45 in its simplest form. And then we're going to see if we have two different or two same square roots, and then we're going to try to add these square roots. So that's what we're going to do. And now if you think you understand uh, this problem, and you're like, oh yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I remember doing this 20, 30, 40 years ago. Well, you might want to pause the video and see if you can uh, simplify these square roots. But uh, let's go ahead and get into this right now. Okay, so we really can't determine whether we can add the square root of 20 and the square root of 45 until we fully simplify these respective square roots. And the way we do this is we want to factor these numbers underneath the square roots. And what we're looking for are something called perfect square factors, right? Perfect squared factors. Let me show you these numbers here uh, that you want to be on the lookout for. And we're talking about numbers like 4, 9, 
16, 25, 36, 49, etc. Now, these are perfect squared factors. Now, what do you think is going on with these numbers? Now, if you're saying, well, all these numbers here, we can take the square root of these uh, numbers and we end up with lovely whole numbers as the answer, right? So the square root of 4, for example, is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 16 is 4, etc. So these numbers here are perfect squared factors. And what we want to do is break up these numbers underneath the square roots in such a way that uh, if we can find a perfect square factor, we want to write it as a perfect square factor. Okay, so I think it's easier just to kind of see this uh, instead of me explaining it. So the square root of 20, I can write the square root of 20 as its factors. So 20 is the same thing as 2 times 10, right? So the square root of 20 is the same thing as the square root of uh, 2 times 10. Now, 2 and 10 are not perfect squares, right? So uh, these numbers are not perfect square factors. However, I can write the square root of 20 as the square root of 4 times 5. And this is what I want because 4 is a perfect squared factor. And you're going to see why this is important in just one second. Okay, so the square root of 45, I can think of this as the square root of 9 times 5. Again, I'm looking for perfect squared factors. Okay, now why is this important? Well, we have a property that uh, we can use when it comes to square roots, and namely, that is we can pull apart a square root, one big square root, square root of factors into individual square roots. So again, I think it's just easier for me to uh, show you this. So the square root of 4 times 5 is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. So the square root of two or more uh, numbers being multiplied together, we can just break this uh, apart by individual square roots. Okay, so once again, the square root of 4 times 5 is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. And likewise, the square root of 9 times 5 is equal to the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. Now, why do you think this is important? Well, if you're saying to yourself, well, look right here, the square root of 4, I know what that is, and I know what the square root of 9 is as well. Well, then we can rewrite these respective terms, these values, differently. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So the square root of 4 is what? Well, that is 2. So instead of the square root of 4 times the, the square root of 5, we have 2 times the square root of 5. Okay, so over here, we have the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. The square root of 9, of course, is 3. So all of this is equal to 3 times the square root of 5. So now, can we add these two square roots? Well, because we have these numbers uh, written differently, we can see that they both have a square root of 5. So, of course, we can add these square roots, and the answer is going to be 2 plus 3, which is 5, or 5 square root of 5. Okay, so a very simple example of adding square roots, but the main idea here is that you really uh, don't know whether you can add two square roots, square roots or subtract two square roots unless you have the square roots fully simplified, meaning that you have to understand perfect square factors and, of course, the properties and principles of square roots. If you're interested in learning more about mathematics, well, then I have a ton of different courses from basic math, algebra, geometry, and even more advanced mathematics like pre-calculus. So you can find links to all this stuff in the description of this video. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.